Hey guys, and welcome to the Stupendous Moon Map Strategy Guide. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about general uh, tips for running on the moon map. If you want specific tips for certain setups or certain bots, um, you can go ahead and request those in the comments below. Um, you can also check out any of the videos that I've posted on the moon map already, um, where I'll talk more about like what to do in certain situations and, and things like that. We are going to talk about uh, um, some specific situations, but that apply generally to uh, anyone who's playing on the moon map and war robots. Most of these should be able to be applied across uh, across leagues, across tiers, um, in whatever situation you're in. So let's jump right into it, and we'll start by talking about um, how to run a support bot on here. So a bot that's loaded out with uh, ranged weaponry. So let's take a look at some sight lines. So your first major sight line that you're going to get is right here. So you can see this line here that I'm drawing. Um, the best place to perch is going to be right up here on this ledge because you can support that center beacon from there. <clears throat> and you can also support uh, several other beacons from this position as well. So you can back up against the hill. You can even be behind the hill uh, for a little bit. But your best location is going to be on the ridge because you can support that beacon um, over there on the far side uh, from up here on the hill. You can also support the center beacon, uh, the beacon to the right when you come out of spawn, as well as this beacon over here. So let me show you some examples. So here we have a uh, Triple Zeus Fury. Um, and it, this doesn't have to be a Fury, this could be a Carnage, this could be, you know, anything else that's, that's a ranged robot. This map, uh, the developer specifically designed to not be a good map for support robots. That's uh, detailed on their website. Um, but this is probably your most viable spot and most likely spot that you're going to be camping out. Now this depends on your team's movements and uh, things you're trying to coordinate. Um, but from this spot you can support uh, uh, beacons, uh, four different beacons. Um, with your range, you can get over to that far side beacon. You can even move into center to, to take a beacon. But all of this is done within um, within deadly range of uh, much higher DPS weaponry, um, all of the close range brawling weapons. So you can see me walking this Fury over here. Um, let's talk about the longest sight line on the map. So if you have um, a team that you're coordinating with or if you have a sniper set up um, with, uh, with a team, uh, a coordinated team battle, um, this is a good spot to be and a good beacon to push. So looking at these sight lines here, this map provided by Pixonic on their website, um, it doesn't show the entire thing. The map goes off the border uh, over here behind the hill. Um, but you can see how long this sight line is. So if you're going to be sniping or if you're running something like heavy molots on it, um, the, this position is a good position to be in because you can maximize the range that you have there. Um, something that's beneficial, uh, you know, when you have multiple teammates as I do here, is um, you can support from so far away. You can stand behind this hill and poke your uh, your heavy hard points up over the top and mostly protect yourself. Um, it's also great uh, if you're running this setup with the heavy molots to take down enemy Ansel shields as they move towards uh, the center beacon, which is often where you'll find uh, Ancelots or Carnages and things like that. Um, this is a great position for heavy molots to take those down. So with the mobility of light and medium bots, um, this spot over here, it makes a great spot for them as well. They can also support uh, multiple beacons just like the um, just like the Fury setup can or, or any of the other support uh, setups can. Um, this doesn't have to be a Regaka. The Regaka just works really well here, um, just as you know as all jumping bots do on this map. Um, it just makes uh, it just makes it much easier to move around and get to the positions that are going to help your team the most. So I can you know help with the full frontal assault underneath the center beacon here. Um, or I can, you know, jump back up top, I can jump out of the way, I can move over to the side beacon and support teammates that are pushing over here. Um, there's there's a lot of options. Um, and this, like I said, doesn't have to be a regaka, it doesn't have to be a jumping bot. Um, but the speed and mobility, um, as I stated before, of light and medium robots are going to allow you to move wherever your team is needed, um, wherever your team needs you the most. So that's something to keep in mind as you're as you're playing. Uh, maybe you're running a Stalker or a Jeopard or a Jesse or uh, maybe a Galahad or um, a Golem or anything like that. Um, with the decent speed of those robots as well as uh, that position, you can really do your team a lot of good. Um, so this is one of the other support setups that is viable uh, for for this map because of because you don't need line of sight. Um, I, I spent several rounds running this and testing it, and because of 
um, you know, people will get trapped in a certain position. Like even if it's a, another griffin, um, they'll get trapped like down in a certain canyon and, and you can really, uh, you can <laughs> really put some heat on them and, and keep them moving a certain direction or at least uh, move their attention towards you. Um, and I, I don't know, I wouldn't recommend this all the time because it's not the greatest on all maps. But uh, anyway, so and since so many people are running ROGs these days, this is actually a route that I prefer to run with the ROG every time I have it in. Um, so I jump right up here. Um, angle my feet off at a 45 degree angle off of that cliff so I don't uh, hit the ground and have to stop and then uh, take the center beacon and support my team um, I, I, I find that in a, the majority of matches that I do this the guys that are moving over towards this direction uh, don't even bother with me um, like they I don't know if they they don't notice I'm there because I have teammates uh, already running on the other side pushing this beacon over here that I'm uh, shooting this Galahad at now uh, but those those uh, red players are heading that direction, so they don't pay as much attention to me. So just a thought there for you guys. So your positioning on the map, uh, where you want to be, depends on where the chaos is located at the moment. It could change any second, um, but make sure you take advantage of uh, realizing that uh, the pockets of battle, like they're going to change positions throughout. And so like right here with this griffin, um, I'm supporting in at the center beacon. I'm trying to, I was trying to help hold it, but from up on that top dome, on the very top of the dome, you're too far away from the beacon to be within its uh, sphere of capture. Um, but from within or from just down on the side, you uh, are able to remain within that. Um, so you can support in here, and this is this is again uh, where you know jumping robots shine here, um, and this position shines as you can support from multiple locations. Um, you can see there, I just tried to jump up against those little airlocks though. Um, and then one thing that's cool about this map is the game could look like that. But then at the very end of the round, it looks like this and you win. Like you could be so far behind, it looks like there's no hope, but just keep playing your hardest because you very well could turn it into a victory just like I did with my clan right here. Um, we were very far behind, but then pulled it in with uh, multiple four caps and five caps, uh, you know, pushing in and out against the enemy team and brought it in for a win. I'm sure you guys have come across that as you play it on the map as well. And so here you can see again, we're down. And then this is how the map ends or how the match ends. So all five of us was, were still there, but we were able to pull it in for a victory. And then using the hills as cover um, to fire, if you have the hard points, that will support that. So if you have a hard point that's on top of the robot, um, like with the Galahad here, it's got the Tron that, shoot, that uh, can shoot over the top. Um, using these hills, using terrain as your advantage, that's something you should be doing on any map, um, but can be particularly beneficial here um, for bot survival as well as uh, support and distraction. Uh, making sure you're using the terrain to your advantage. When your team is pushing into center and you have the robots that can uh, they can help out there, uh, make sure you're supporting your teammates that are pushing under there, especially if you're not currently holding the center beacon and there's not a red player up top. Um, it's a great time to push all the way through and grab their beacon. So the griffs work well. Uh, you know, just, just like with uh, aphids we talked about with support bots earlier, you can provide support to multiple beacons from this position. Um, using your aphids and then uh, using your jump ability to um, to close gaps. This is like the only map that I um, like pretty much ever use the Griff's jump to close a gap between me and another bot. Like it says in the Griff's description, <laughs> I usually only use it for like a defensive ability um, or a traversal. Um, but in this map, you can close the gap a lot with, uh, um, especially with this setup with the Orc and Aphid Griff um, to be able to work the map a little bit easier and uh, support your team the best you can. So making sure you know when to jump in and grab beacons or you know when to pop out from behind cover to use your orkins, um, that'll come as you play the map more. So because the game moves so fast on this map, the more you can team up, even with random players in the match uh, that you're in, uh, the better. So you see all of us over here, I think there's four of us over here taking out this uh, Ancelot. Just make sure that you don't, all four of you, stay together on that side for too long. Um, because you're going to start losing beacons if you're too heavy to one side. So uh, lastly, taking a look here, just look at the detail that's put into this map. So Pixonic set up a private test server, and my wife and I <laughs> played this round. I just wanted to go around and take a look and kind of give the art team props. I mean, look at the detail in this map, like all the little things, the pipes, the vents, the little gas effects, the terrain, the craters, the hills. Um the stars in the sky, the earth up there, um, the ATMs right here. 
Um, I'm just kidding. They're probably rocket um, <laughs> rocket launch pads, but uh, it looks like ATMs is what we think over here on the Stupendous channel. Um, but anyways, I think they really did a great job on this. I look forward to the uh, the next new map that comes out as well as anything they put on in the future. They're really doing a great job. So hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Again, this isn't... Uh, this isn't meant to be a very specific guide for every single setup. If you want that, make sure you check out my future videos on the moon map. Um, but for now, I hope you guys have an amazing day.